Great seeing you here for Devos. Okay, all week long, we're looking here. Are you ready for the rapture? Are, are you ready? And hey, listen, you see all the signs we're talking about in church. Now, I believe it is all my heart because you know we're working on building our church. I'm still working on a project. This is what I believe personally. And this is biblically true. You just keep on working. You just keep on serving. I don't want Jesus to catch me laying around the house, okay? I want him to see me with my boots on, serving him. If he takes me out in the middle of a project, that's okay. But you want to be ready. Now, you should be excited about the rapture. That's all I want to talk about today. Get excited. Don't, don't be afraid. What are you afraid of? Listen, if you're not living right, <laughs> maybe you should be a little scared, huh? Listen, start living for him. Put him number one in your life because I want you to get excited. Look in Titus chapter 2, verse 13. It says, waiting for our blessed hope. I like that. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, hope in the Bible is an actual fact. We've kind of twisted that word that we hope something's going to happen. It is a blessed fact. Our hope, our joy of the fact that Jesus is returning. The blessed hope. I want you to write that down. Get excited about the blessed hope of the rapture of the church. Now, you say, I went to a church, and we never talked about this. And I know very few churches that talk about it. I'm going to tell you the reason why. Most Christians, in their soul, when it comes to the Bible, they have the depth of a puddle. And, and uh, you know, it's a, a mile wide and an inch deep. That's a relationship with God. The Bible has more to say about the second coming of Jesus Christ than baptism. Almost every chapter, all 300 chapters of the Bible in the New Testament, there, uh, if, you if you broke up the second coming of Christ, it speaks about it in every single chapter. It's not really every chapter, but it speaks about it so many times in the New Testament it could be written in every single chapter. That's a big subject. Big subject in the Old Testament, too. Now look in 2 Timothy 4.8. Oh, look here what Paul says. Now this is for those who are excited. He said, henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearance. Now, notice, this is a special crown for those who are looking for the rapture of the church. I, I hate to say this. There's many believers. When a rapture happens, they're not going to know what hit them. There's other believers that believe in the rapture, but they don't like thinking about it. There is a reward if you're excited about the rapture. It's just like when... Dad or mom come home from work. I know that little kid comes running to the door because mommy's home or daddy's home and they couldn't wait to see you. That's what God wants to see from us. Now, some of you are like the bad kid sitting in the back room and you're some little computer geek playing a game or something. You're playing tootsie, footsie with, with the devil in this world. And you're a Christian. Listen, give up that stupid stuff. You want to live for him. Make your life count for him. Okay, the crown of righteousness. I want you to write that down. I want you to start working on that, and that is being excited about the rapture. Our future is as bright as the promises of God's word. I, I like that. The promises of God. It is as bright as that. Now, get ready for the rapture. Really, there, there's so many exciting things. I can't wait that one day, if I knew, and I'll never get to know this, but if I knew, you've heard me say, when the day of the rapture is coming, I'd go to the graveyard, and I hate going there, but I'd go there, and I would just be waiting. I'd be standing between my, the two graves and my two boys, and right before it happened, I'd start patting on their graves there, and I'd say, my Mikey, my Randy, God's morning has come. It's time to wake up. I'm talking about their physical bodies. Oh, what a wonderful day. We've, we're going to be with our loved ones. We're going to be joined with them. So listen, let's start really living for the Lord because the signs of the times prove that he can come any day.